I thought I'd divide my talk today, um, it's supposed to be about health and trains, into health promotion, disease prevention, and health problems. So to begin with, I, I just have this no knowledge that passenger trains provide the healthiest environment of any form of transportation. And I really believe that they're so expensive. Uh, the air is great. Um, I have a bit of a lung problem. It's a lot easier to, br to breathe in a passenger train than in a bus or a car or an airplane. And uh, maybe best of all is you can get up and walk. Uh, you can walk through the car, you can walk through two cars. With our old uh, train that's gone, you could walk into the baggage car, but you weren't very welcome because all the b barking dogs. Uh, but just getting up and moving is so important. You've probably all heard of phlebitis, that blood clots in your veins. Uh, so you need to move, and passenger trains are the best thing for that. Uh, a little while ago, I was flying from uh, Spain, where this funny picture is taken, to uh, uh, Montreal, and I knew that I wouldn't be able to move my legs at all, hardly in Air Canada transport, so I took a bunch of aspirins, <laughs> so my blood would be thinner. Uh, the other thing about passenger trains, the seats are so comfortable, so roomy, um, you can, and lots of leg room, you can sit back and read a book, or there's always Wi-Fi on, on uh, uh, Via, anyway, uh, and uh, do whatever you want. And also there's privacy, because sometimes you have a seatmate that you're not crazy about, uh, and uh, so the seats are so wide that you don't have to, to worry about that bad breath or obesity or something. <laughs> Um, and the other thing, there's lots of daylight. The, 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 the windows are huge. I mean, you can pull the blinds down if you want, but I think, I think daylight in the daytime is really healthy. Um, and also, watching the passing scene is great, too. Just instead of sitting there all confined in an airplane seat, you can, these big windows allow you to watch what's going on out there. Um, Going north from the Sioux, I mean, forests, hills, lakes, animals, um, I think that's healthy too. And it's great for families and friends who want to be together. On a train, you can swivel the seats around so you can face each other. And um, the last time I was on a VIA train, there were these people, probably, there were four adults and two kids. Uh, eating a lunch, I don't know if they brought it or ordered it on the train, but, and there was a table that could be pulled down from the side. So they were, it was very convivial looking arrangement. Uh, for children, it's not as confining. Of course, you don't want your kids to be running up and down the aisles all the time, but they can move around. So it's great for traveling with kids. Um, as far as health problems go, as far as planning transportation, planning anything should be based on demographics. And as Evelyn said, we have a large proportion of people over 65 in northeastern Ontario, in Algoma 20% more. People over 65 in, than in Ontario as a whole. Um, so the transportation needs to be based on these older people, uh, it needs to be considered, um, who have more frailties, basically. Um, I know, the first thing I was thinking about is depression from loneliness. We need to be able to visit our friends and family and have, have them visit us. I can remember a million years ago at U of T, uh, when I got lonely, I'd just hop on the train in the weekend and go home. That fixed it. But we can't do that here. I mean, my family all live all over the continent, and I can't see them very often unless I fly, which is expensive. 
the other major issue for health problems is the inability of many citizens in northeastern Ontario to get to a doctor, a nurse practitioner, or a hospital for treatment. Um, there's just no way to get there. I mean, everybody doesn't have somebody who can drive them. Uh, we had an issue here in, in Algoma where a lady from Hearst had to come down every week to get treatment. And she came in the train, went back in the train. Uh, now her daughter has to take a couple of days off work to, to bring her for her treatments. But we all don't have a daughter who can drive us. Um, I expect this is a problem all over northeastern Ontario and people farther east of here can't get to North Bay or Sudbury to a hospital. Uh, the Ministry of Health has designated Sudbury as a regional hospital and the rest of our hospitals are called community hospitals. And if we can't get our treatment in our local hospital, then we're, we're supposed to be sent to, to Sudbury. How do you get there? And as Evelyn said, it's a lot better for elders or people who are ill to travel on a train. There's room, uh, it's easier to get to the bathroom. You're not confined with bugs flying all over the place, germs, so infectious, uh, infections aren't uh, contracted as easily. And it's much more comfortable. So if you're not well, it's not fun to be cooped up in something. Um, I, ha uh, I had a cardiologist that wanted me to go to uh, St. Mike's instead of Sudbury. And he, but he said you won't get any help with transportation payments. Um, so I did. About a year and a half ago, I was in the Maritimes visiting my daughter. And uh, in Nova Scotia and New Brunswick were investigating something interesting. I don't know what's happened, but they were arranging for buses to go through the rural areas to pick up people to go to a train, to go to a city, to get medical care. Now, I don't know what's happened to that plan. I don't even know what's happened to trains in the Maritimes, but I thought it was excellent, an excellent idea. Are we almost out of time? Oh, I've got a few minutes. I just want to give um, a personal thing. Uh, I often go to Coburg to visit my brother it's a town between Port Hope and Belleville on Lake Ontario. Uh, and of course I can't go there by train. So I usually fly Porter because it's c close to Union Station where I can get a train. And the, pe the staff are very friendly. The seats are very cramped. <laughs> um, but I get there and of course uh, once, you, once you land, it's not like a train where you get off. Everybody's kind of pulling their stuff down from up above, and uh, then you get off and you have to wait for your luggage, and there's nobody to help you get your luggage off the, the merry-go-round thing. Um, anyway, that's the, way, that's the way you go. And there's a shuttle bus that goes from Porter to Union Station, theoretically. It actually is about a 20-minute walk from where it stops on York Street beside the Royal Yard across Front Street through all kinds of construction to get to Union Station. Once there, uh, there are volunteers at uh, info kiosks that tell you where your gate is and how to get there. Once you get to your gate, uh, via, P uh, via personnel will come along and say, they notice your gray hair, and they say, would you like to sit down? Everybody else is lined up. So I go and sit down and a lot of elders and disabled people and families with kids. And then that same person, when it's time to board, takes you to your rail car. Uh, each of us have different cars, depending on where we get off. You go to get up and somebody comes down and picks up your suitcase and puts it someplace and uh, directs you to your seat. I usually, when you buy your ticket, you usually uh, can say where you want to sit. And uh, I usually sit so I can face Lake Ontario all the way out to Coburg. Uh, and once there, um, 
the, that same person on board takes your suitcase, finds it, takes it down the steps, and there you are. Thank you.